Now, so far, we've taken this third order linear differential equation and by using the substitutions z1 equals to y, z2 equal to y dashed and z3 equal to y double dashed, we formed the system z dashed equals az plus f where a was this matrix of coefficients and f was where these extra additional functions added at the end. We've taken the matrix A and diagonalized it. There's the diagonal matrix. There's the matrix of eigenvectors. So now it's time to decouple this to get equations which can actually be solved. And for that, we use the diagonalization, which is P D inverse of PZ plus F. To make this useful, this will have to get isolated so it can carry out multiplication. So removing that P by pre-multiplying all three terms by the inverse of P will give me this. And then taking another substitution, which will be let W equal this part equal the inverse of P times Z, in which case W dashed will be the inverse of P times Z dashed. So, so far I've got this. I'll have W dashed equals D times W plus, and I'll have to let G equal whatever this comes to. Now, this is the only time I'd actually need to know what the inverse of P is. If it were readily determinable, I would just use the inverse of P Failing that, I can just use row operations to find what G is, because I actually need to know what G is. I, did, I don't need to know the inverse of P simply to reverse that to find Z once I know the W's. But I do need to know it here, or else use a system of row operations. So I'll need to know what this G is. I'll find that just now. So what have I got? Well, if G is equal to the inverse of P times F, that means that F is going to equal P times G. So I'll solve that system of equations. PG equals F. Well, that would be G1, G2, G3. And of course, to solve that, I would take the augmented matrix. So my augmented matrix would be would end up looking like this then. I'll do the first step in it. So the first, I've got 1, 1, 1, 0. Row 1 plus row 2. Row 2 plus row 1 is what I'll say, rather, will be a, a 0 negative 1, 4, and still a 0. And for this one, row 3 minus row 1 will be a, a 0, 3, 8, x squared. One more step. Move that 3. So row 3 plus 3 lots of row 2. Should do that. 1, 1, 1, 0, 0, negative 1, 4. I'm not going to change that. I just want to get rid of that particular entry. Will be 0, 0, but then that would be 20, but still just x squared. Now I've got the entries in for the three parts, so that I've got g3 is going to be 1 20th of x squared, negative g2 is going to be, oops, negative g2 plus 4 of them, so that's plus a fifth of x squared is 0, which means that G2 will be one fifth of x squared. And then G1 plus a fifth of x squared plus a twentieth of x squared is zero, which will give me G3 is equal to, G1 is equal to, well, one fifth, four, and one is five, five to is a quarter. So that'll be negative a quarter x squared. So that this part here then will be g which is negative a quarter x squared, a fifth x squared, and a twentieth of x squared. Clear that away. Now since that's a diagonal matrix it means they're all separated now. So that means I've got w1 dashed, w2 dashed, w3 dashed for those three functions is negative 1, 0, 0, 0, negative 2, 0, 0, 0, 3 times w1, w2, w3, 
plus this little column of additional functions which is readily separable because or thanks to this diagonal matrix into three separate first order ODEs namely W1 dashed is negative 1 or just negative W1 minus a quarter x squared to be solved W2 dashed is negative 2 W2 notice of course those are just diagonal values plus one fifth of x squared and w3 dashed is 3 w3 plus one twentieth of x squared this is now the system of linear equations which can be solved separately and once you know what w1 w2 and w3 are then from the substitution you use which was w equals the inverse of p times z you can reconstruct Z from P times W without any need for the inverse of P. So the next step is going to be, what are the solutions to these three linear ODEs? That's the next video. Skip it if you wish.